Hey, what's going on everybody? Rob Satch from Feedback Wrench. Um, this video is going to be all about if you are an accountant, a bookkeeper, and you're trying to do this outsourced accountant model that I keep talking about. If you're starting your own bookkeeping business um, and you want to work from home bookkeeping business, I've got some tips for you. And this is one tip that I think is going to be really helpful for you um, in terms of if you're kind of your typical accountant that just generally speaking is an introvert. Somebody who um, I think entrepreneurship comes down to two things. You have sales and then you have execution. And on the execution side, it's just generally somebody who loves process, who loves doing bookkeeping, loves details. And on the left, when it comes to sales, you know, you, you can have high detail people, in, uh, introverted people be good at sales, but just generally speaking, prospecting, casting vision, and moving people along through a sales pipeline requires a different muscle. So one of the things I want to talk about is just what do you do if you find yourself as the introvert or the person whose sales muscle is not very good? If you are trying to build one of these firms, if you're trying to be a, a work from home bookkeeper or whatever that is, what are some options you can do so you can actually get customers and you can actually close a sale that's worth something? And the reason why I'm talking about this is because, and it's gonna be hard, I don't wanna project my strength onto any of you. Um, it is difficult when this isn't your strength to get it all figured out, but here's a couple of ideas that I have that can help you out. First of all, if you're a CPA and you're hardwired this way, I recommend that you try and find a partner, okay? An actual business partner that can be the yin to your yang. You know, when I look at Nuance Financial Tax and Accounting, the firm that I had built, I built it with my best friend, Nick Meester, who is a CPA, and I built it with Ed Reese, who is an accountant, and he's very good. And what we found was is that the complementary giftings mixed together um, were a, an amazing mix and that by having complementary giftings where I was more geared to go out and engage with people um, for the prospecting stuff but also when it came to a meeting you know it, it's easier for me to help identify the needs for people ask great questions uncover I have a natural curiosity about businesses and their operations their profits you know their problems and what's going on and then I'm gifted at connecting the solutions that we have to the problems that they have, right? So that was a great mix. Nick's on, Nick, on the other hand, is really good at making sure that everything gets done perfectly. He, like, he just, he knows how to make sure nothing is mixed or missed. And the, the combination of the two of us did really well. I think that if you're a CPA and an accountant that is hardwired for this more extra, or introverted, you're more of an execution style person, it can be learned how to do better in this, but I would almost embrace the fact that it's probably never going to be your strength, right? And you want to mitigate your strengths or mitigate your weaknesses and maximize your strengths in everything that you do when it comes, well, anything, business, relationships, whatever it is, right? I think if I were you, what I would do is start taking some meetings with some of the new financial planners in your area. So financial representatives with Northwestern Mutual, um, Ed Jones, Thrivent Financial, uh, God, there's a bunch of them out there. And here's the reason why. Chances are they're not going to make it. <laughs> Some of them will, but a whole bunch of them won't because they just, the way that the compensation structure is set up in those companies is really not helpful for growing a business if you want to do it the, a way that's not just totally aligned to insurance. So. The reason why I say this is because if you were to find the right financial planner, they want leads because they need help with it and you need leads because they need help with it. Um, you can scratch each other's back and usually if you work together, you can strike a great partnership, but even like an actual business partnership where maybe you guys work hand in hand, you work side by side, you do marketing together, maybe you create another entity and you market together. Now financial planners have to be really careful when they come to their own recommendations, but there's no reason why that they can't be shoulder to shoulder with a great CPA accountant or bookkeeping firm, and that can be really phenomenal. So I would recommend that as an amazing relationship that you can build and it could work and maybe you find somebody who's like, 
you know what, I really wish I could just make money doing this. And if they're financially inclined and they understand this stuff, a lot of times their planning process, what you could do is you could join together and you could, could br provide financial coaching rather than full retirement planning or, or he could even just move over his retirement plan or she could retirement planning quit selling annuities and quit selling insurance or keep that going or whatever it is you can find a business mix that can be very interesting and most when i was at mass mutual for a little bit and thriving financial but particularly mass mutual when i started um, meeting a lot of these advisors that were out there and had been there for a long time they all had very interesting relationships with two groups of people and it was estate planning attorneys and CPAs. They are itching to be aligned with you. A lot of them have a good lord it's sunny out. A lot of them have some ulterior motives that you have to be careful of but it can be a cool place to find a partner that it will actually work. So I, I would really recommend that you take a look at that. So look for a partner. That's the first thing. The second thing I would do is I would start writing scripts and creating YouTube videos. Um, you know, I know people that if they get themselves geared up, they're able to do a YouTube video if they actually write a quick script. And if you write a quick script, you could read out a script um, of what you're trying to do, who you are, and then you could just do B-roll video on top of it. B-roll meaning just um, pictures of you, photos of you. It can be a really simple video. Um, I really like You Betcha Co. You Betcha Co. out of Minnesota here. Eric Johnson is the owner. He does a phenomenal job. Um, and I tell you what, if you just, you record some scripts, you start uploading to YouTube, start uploading to social media, that can be really good. There's all sorts of tips that go into that, but at its core foundation is that if you are an introvert, and if you're not gonna be bumping into people and prospecting and doing that type of thing, you're gonna to wanna to leverage your, your your ability to prepare a communication and then and then learn how to read it fluently or even get it read on Fiverr. Find somebody that can read it out for you. But I would encourage you to start doing it and uh, in creating videos, they don't necessarily have to be talking head videos like this because um, this is just within my wheelhouse and what I'm willing to do. So that would be the second thing that I would do. The last thing that I would do is start getting coaching and start practicing, right? Um, this is really hard. Sales is not an easy thing, but sales is something that certainly can be learned. There's an institute called the Brooks Institute, and Brooks has sales training out there. Jeffrey Gittimer, John Maxwell all have some great sales training. And as much as you might hate it, I'm telling you, if you get some coaching, you, you read some books and you start to practice with people, um, asking some questions and, and getting some feedback, you really can improve. Um, so, you know, find a mentor, find somebody that maybe is in your BNI or you're in a networking group or something like that, that can go shoulder to shoulder with you. But what you have to do is you actually have to try and sing the song, right? You actually have to start asking questions and uh, that'll be really good. And here's the last thing is, is remember that great sales is just about asking phenomenal questions. It's about having a, a genuine curiosity about their situation, about their business, about who they are, the problems they have, the struggles they had, the, the story that they have. You don't wanna waste their time, but if you can ask excellent questions, you're gonna bump into sales all the time. And uh, yeah, that's kind of my last piece of advice for you. Good luck, God bless. I hope things move upward and forward for you. Head to feedbackrench.com if you want help with your digital marketing, your websites. Um, I'm gonna go lift some weights.